Welcome, Welcome to, to Point, Point Blank, Blank, where we suss out the issues that matter to you. I'm Shiting. And I'm Elsie. Yep. And tonight we have some guests with us. And starting from here, this gateway, he is an ASEAN scholar who just graduated from NTU. And over at that side, there's Sanka. Uh, he's still studying in NUS. Yes. And we have and Timothy. Timothy, Hi. who is the head of the SMU uh, Center for Counseling and Guidance. Right. Yes, welcome. Thank, yeah, you. thank you for it's joining us here. here. Yeah, <laughs> and before we, you know, discuss the pertinent issue at hand, let's take a look at this video. Yep. A bouquet and stock of flowers lay dying at a spot where David Vijaya fell four floors to his death. But memories of him and the incident are still fresh in many people's minds. Uh, this is the first time this kind of thing happened in Singapore. I mean, the... When you think about violence in, on campus, you think about America, you think about Virginia Tech, you don't expect such things to happen in Singapore, but uh, it, it does. Uh. It's really shocking to see this. I mean, I'm only in my second year, and, and uh, yeah, many, t many a times I always hear stories overseas, but I never really think it would happen here. It's yeah. very difficult. Uh. I mean, if they really want to hide it, there's no way of knowing. I guess it really shows the importance of how we need to be accountable to each other, to, to see that if we're if we're really doing all right. I mean, if they really intend to not share with anyone, they will just appear happy to you. But after, like, when you leave, they will just hide in their little corner again. Do you have foreign students in your class? Foreign okay. students, yeah, there's a lot. What's the percentage? 60%. Most of my friends are locals. Okay. Yeah. Why do you not mix with them? Um, I don't think we have any chance to really interact much except in tutorials. But then most of the time in tutorials, we are just... Yeah, we just... Focus on the class only. Tin Shu Kobe, but so Shank Koya, but so. Ah, we, 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 this role is increasingly challenging as students are unafraid to quiz lecturers and ask for more information to do better. How do lecturers cater to these demanding students? At the same time, undergrads face immense pressure in the competitive environment. How do lecturers handle this bunch of students who may be tearing their hair out just for a better grade? How does this affect the student-lecturer relationship? Hi, welcome back. And now we have our fourth <laughs> guest, uh, Dr. Hua Wei, who is a lecturer from the Lee Kuan Yew School of uh, Business, SMU. Mm. Yeah, so welcome joining us. Hello. She made it in you time. You made it in time. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, just like what the video said just now, um, students nowadays, undergrads, are actually much more demanding. We want to do very well in school. Mm -hmm. So, how do lecturers feel about this? You know, this situation where you know kids are all very very stressful. You know, you're a lecturer in SMU, yeah. so mm -hmm. what, how's the interaction like with you know, your students? Well, I teach more than 100 students each semester. I understand this Kiazo is a mentality. And our students are very, very good, so they're motivated to perform well. But I think it's really important to lay out the bottom line. You know, the, the grade is the outcome. It's one way to benchmark your performance for the course, but it's not everything. It's really your learning. Right? And then the argument shouldn't be around what grade I receive because it's not something I assign to you randomly. It's what you earn through your efforts and maybe there are some random factors mm. that make you feel like the grade is not really accurately re reflecting your grasp of knowledge. But, you know, that's life. Mm. I'm sorry. You know, this is the harsh reality of life. Okay, but really what we, sh what we should uh, focus on is the learning from the whole course. Right, okay. Yeah. So have you, like, I, I'm sure um, what you meant is actually, you know, grades is not everything, it's all about, you know, uh, more... The, lear the, the, the learning process. of uh, knowledge. And yeah, that's that, right. right. But, but I think from the student's mm. perspective, it's not as yeah. easy that's to right. think about. So what do you think, Sanka? Mm. Okay, uh, I'd like to agree refer to a certain point of, uh, a certain extent for the fact that, okay, I... There are certain modules which I take. I mean, I'm really, really interested in studying these modules and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the grades, they do play a part when I have to graduate because they are the ones which count towards my honours. Mm -hmm. okay, but I do enjoy these modules, but the thing is, I don't really enjoy them for the fact that 
at the end of the day, I still have to mark and I still have to score well because I still have to compete with the rest of the students because I need to be on the other, the one of the end of, of the bell curve so that I can perform better yeah. in terms yeah. of <laughs> honors and stuff like that. Yeah. So the learning part seems to be like underplayed when it comes to education mm -hmm. system and stuff like that. Yeah, you're right. Actually, th that's how Singapore yeah, is. We are all <laughs> looking at you know the grades, the results. So mm. Timothy, you are an adjunct, you know, faculty in SMU. That's right. So you also teach the students in SMU. That's right. Do you feel very pressured? You know, the students are so pressured to do so well. I think one of the things I realized that there's a lot of uh, expectations, mm. you know, both from the students themselves, uh, from the family members, and also from as you know the instructors, and we also expect our students to do well. So in a way, I think, uh, like what Dr. Huawei was just mentioning earlier, is that the students actually pressurize themselves a lot because they want to do well. Shankar mentioned perfectly well. You, know, <laughs> that you, have, you have a bell curve thing. You want to make sure that you score the A's. Mm -hmm. So you work really hard. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really a, a whole expectation uh, point of view from a student's perspective. Mm -hmm. And then of course, if I mean, if I have, a, eventually my kids are going to be in university as well. So I'm sure I want my kids to do well. So I'll be sort of looking over their shoulders and how are you doing all the kind of stuff and making sure they are also doing because I'm, I'm going to be paying good money for them to be in university as well. So I think it's a lot to do with societal mm. versus individual expectations when it comes to the pressure that students face. Mm. Yeah. So, but the students get so stressed up and then there are certain symptoms, right? Maybe you would have noticed, I don't know. The, do you think that the lecturers nowadays have to also be more sensitive to find out, oh, the student is like definitely, uh, definitely. stressed yeah, up, that's right. that we should help them. Correct. I think, I think, them. I think the, the role of an instructor nowadays is not as simple as it mm. used to be previously yep. mm. um, because it, we are looking at a very holistic approach towards uh, education. It's no, no longer just making sure that they do well for the grades, mm. but we want to develop the student as a whole you know, mm. individual. So, so that's why as, as instructors, we, are, you know, we have to look out for signs and symptoms yeah. which students may display, especially if they're distressed. Mm. Um, some of the signs that we, we do notice is that sometimes students will just start to disappear from classes. Uh, absenteeism is one issue that, we, that is a very clear sign mm. that something is up with the student. Um, some other signs would be, let's say, we see that students' grades start to drop. Yeah. Mm. Or... Um, other more interesting signs with this, you, you may have a student who is usually very quiet in class. Yep. If they're distressed, suddenly they talk a lot mm. and vice versa. Maybe a student who's very noisy, not, not, not necessarily noisy, but who talks a lot in class. Suddenly, <laughs> he starts becoming very quiet and, and, not too, and, and maybe he may not even uh, hang around with his friends as much. Mm. So these are, are some of the signs which instructors uh, do look out for. Mm. In fact, very often uh, I do have um, instructors, I mean just, just this past week, yeah. We had a, a, another professor who uh, was having a, an issue with a student. So, so the, 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 the prof uh, emailed uh, Huawei and myself and asked, you know, what should I do? Because the instructor noticed that something was up. Okay. So, so we gave the, instru uh, the instructor some, some kind of uh, directions or mm -hmm. some suggestions mm -hmm. on what she should do. So she followed up with that. Mm -hmm. and, then, and in the end, she connected the student, had a chat. And in the end, the student said, okay, I think the student said, yeah, I need to see a counsellor. Wow. Oh, so yeah. realizing that there is a problem, right? Mm. That's right. So what about doc, uh, Dr. Huawei? So have you personally felt <coughs> and uh, uh, meet students like that and then in your class and then you counseled them? You spotted the symptoms? Well, uh, I think uh, as when I teach a class, then the relationship is teacher-student. Yeah. And then the counseling part then would be part of the teaching, but it won't be a formal therapist client mm. relationship mm. you see I cannot play the dual role at the yeah, same time right. and when I counsel my students in through the counseling center with him that is only this counseling relationship we make it clear that the students is not going to take take my classes and it should be a student a student I haven't taught before mm. okay so we keep the, the distinction separate mm. okay what I do through my teaching though ironically I teach management of people at work okay? <laughs> so it is yeah, about it is about interpersonal relationships yes. I think you know I echo what Tim just said it is actually very important uh, and I try to do that too to get a message across to our students that mm everybody goes through difficult times, right? And everybody needs to voice out their needs. And also you should be ready to kind of notice. That's part of EQ really, okay. to read the emotional signs, what they are going through in their life. And if you can, offer uh, a pair of ears and maybe help. 
Okay. Yeah. So okay, we have a uh, Asian scholar in the living room. Okay, yeah. you yeah. used to study in NTU, and do you find it? You know, do you find it easy to talk to lecturers about problems that you may face at in school? Um, in a way, it is. I mean, the lecturers do uh, are very forthcoming in the sense that um, in my initial. Uh, first few semesters, I was actually having difficulties and mm -hmm. I was getting warning letters. But even my lecturers were forthcoming. They came up to me, they talked to me, they said, if there's anything, uh, any help you need, let us know. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that it's never that simple in the sense that, um, yeah, I'm having difficulty coping with my grades, but how can the professor help me with that? It's sometimes it's just the case where subject does, doesn't work with the way, with my interests, or I'm just mm -hmm. not good at it. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that you can therefore work in tandem with the professor to up your grades all the way to say an A. Perhaps you can push it up from say, not so good grade to a passable grade, but the fact is there that we have a standard to meet and it may not always be easy to meet that standard. And another point would be that I feel that, I mean, some of us, we really enjoy doing our activities in school. Um, I was very active in uh, co-curricular activities, but that's one of those aspects in campus life that they encourage you to do, but they don't reward you for it. So if your grades suffer, um, quite bluntly I was told, um, well, you have to deal with it and maybe you want to scale back on your mm. co-curricular activities and focus more on your studies. Okay. Yeah. So and that's like too bad, you know, yeah. 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 on your own. <laughs> Do you agree, Sankar? Do you have the same experience that it's... Okay, actually in terms of uh, lecturer-student relationship, I think there are a lot of avenues for, especially in the NUS and in particular my department. Okay, I come from the engineering department. Um, there are a lot of avenues for us to approach the lecturers when we actually have a uh, problem in terms of either academic or even our personal stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, but mostly for in terms of academic related stuff, I mean the lecturers and uh, tutors, whoever they are, they will actually like uh, tell us that, you know, they will give us their address and I mean their room address, their phone numbers and whatsoever. So we can go and approach them, just give them a call anytime and go and talk to them if there is a need. Uh, on the other hand, if there are any personal stuff that we have to like uh, share with or something like that, uh, my department, actually I have a mentor whom mm. I can go and approach him for anything, I can talk to him about it and so on. So for that matter, I think there are like a lot of avenues for us to talk to the lecturers and, and uh, maintain a good student lecturer relationship. Uh, when it comes to grades, I think it's more really like um, how a student has to manage his time. I mean, I need to prioritize what is important for me. So, because I'm already an adult, I mean, I'm already in NUS and year two and stuff like that. I need to know what is my priority, what I want to do at the end of the four years or whatsoever. So, in terms of like uh, what grades I get, it's the amount of effort I put into that particular module or whatsoever. So, at the end of the day, it's my own personal responsibility and I would like to take it on my own, yeah, rather than complain on anyone else. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but uh, you have a mentor scheme yes. in NUS. Does SMU have this uh, kind of mentor scheme? Because like what uh, uh, Assistant Professor Huawei was saying that if I'm teaching you, I don't want to be counselling you. Mm -hmm. I think that's why they, they have a mentor that's not teaching them mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to assist them. In SMU, them. We, we do have um, academic mentors or mm. academic counsellors. Yeah. I mean, the term counsellor is very loosely here. Yeah. Mm. Um, <clears throat> each uh, professor is assigned a number of students mm. to, for, them to, for these students essentially to, if they have any difficulties when it comes to academics to approach these professors and professors can give them some, some advice, some directions on what they should be doing mm. to you know, make sure they do well for, for schoolwork and all that. So in a way, um, <coughs> we don't really have a mentor per se for every individual student mm. because every student takes different modules. So it's, it's fairly difficult for every student to be assigned a... Let's say, for example, if a student is from social science and I can, the, the student cannot be... Uh, uh, Huawei cannot be a mentor because it's a completely different school yeah. and different, different right. topics as mm. well. Mm. So I said most of the time, uh, uh, that's why in our context, we work more on a, a uh, safety net, emotional mm. safety net kind of mm. concept where it's really more on broad scale. Mm. Yeah, and if any uh, issues are picked up, and then we respond accordingly. Mm. Yeah. But what is the ratio? Is it like one counsellor to 100 students? Then it's kind of high, right, the ratio? So mm. The, the, the ratio offhand, I can't tell you the numbers yeah. now. Mm. Yeah, mm. But mm. There's, there's, there's definitely some ratios there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can turn the spotlight back to the, the lecturer. I mean, like what Timothy said, now lecture is not just simply teaching or talking down. So mm -hmm. it could be involved a lot of other things, right? Spotting students, trying to meet their emotional needs. So do the lecturer feel a lot more stress as well nowadays? 
Uh, no, personally, I don't. <laughs> I enjoy my teaching a lot. Okay. I think the, the interaction is really a two-way learning process. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm getting older, unfortunately, day <laughs> by day. But by each batch of my students, they are young. Yeah, yeah. They are like 21. All the students I get every yeah. year, they are 21 or 22. So they bring into the classroom their mm -hmm. new understanding of the world and mm -hmm. technology, all those kind of things. So in that sense, I think we are equal on, in that sense. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the communication channel, you know, in terms of emotional management, mm -hmm. my role as the lecturer, in addition to the technical knowledge transfer, is to help my students to understand. And going back to the point um, he just met, made, which I really agree, it is you are adults, right? You are young, but mm -hmm. you're an adult. Mm -hmm. Therefore, your life is in your hands. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of things. You have to multitask. You have a lot of courses. You have your personal relationships. You have your social relationships. Mm -hmm. If you feel like there is too much or there's too little sometimes, mm -hmm. okay, uh, you need to learn to manage that. Mm -hmm. Prioritize and maybe ask mm -hmm. for help when you need it. Mm -hmm. or offer help when you see somebody else needs that. Mm -hmm. So I think from my perspective as the teacher, if we can get that message across to students, it is your responsibility because it's your life. You are entitled to receive help and please encourage and offer help with, if you can. Then if everybody can more or less do that, we are pretty much in very good shape. <laughs> okay, great. Mm -hmm. So when we come back after the break, we will find out what are the stresses that undergrads go through. So I'll see you later.